so I was ordained in 2009 and there were three of us in my year. So we all had the opportunity then to go to uh, each other's home countries for our first masses, you know, the first time we celebrated mass at home in our home parish. So there was myself from Ireland, evidently, uh, one from Slovakia and one from the Ivory Coast. So we all heaped into a plane anyway, went off to the Ivory Coast, which was very, very interesting. Um, strongly recommend it if you ever get the chance. Uh, very interesting mentality, culture, history. It's just so, so different. Climate, my goodness. Okay, maximum temperatures, only 32 degrees. Minimum temperatures, 28. Between 28 and 32, all year round. It's incredible. You, you, you kind of you get used to the heat. What you don't get used to is the humidity. My goodness. But anyway, long we won't, won't get lost in, not in, in the... Uh, geography of the situation, but um, very, very interesting. And what was another, another thing that was very striking was when you come from a relatively affluent country like, like Ireland, and uh, you know, the, 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 the church, which is established for 150 ish years, the, the faith is much longer, but like the physical buildings, we'll say, uh, they, they date back about that far, the, the, the first big churches and that. Um, so we have, we have a long-standing Christian tradition, but also kind of architectural evidence of it. And the Ivory Coast, the church is, is younger, and it's still, it's still growing, it's still building up, and obviously just because of the, the affluence, the, the level of, of so they're not poor, by African standards, they'd be considered a relatively affluent country, but the problem which I could not get my head around while I was there, you could grow crops in the Ivory Coast all year round, because it never freezes, never, I mean, you need above six or seven degrees for grass to grow. You could grow grass all you want. You can grow crops all year round, the whole place, like a natural greenhouse. It's like, it's like, it's like Iowa, like a natural greenhouse, the whole place. Just in Iowa, it gets cold in the winter, it doesn't there. And, you know, so you can see even the, the sides of, of the rows, like all sorts of plants and shrubs and uh, banana trees, coconut trees, coca plants. But what absolutely kills them is corruption corruption that the wealth the power gets into the hands of the top two percent and they're multi-millionaires and everyone else just deals with the scraps and it's just i i i just i found it kind of saddening uh, angering if i'm completely honest just so frustrating these are good people they will actually want to work there was one guy outside my accommodation and every evening he was standing there trying to sell a used sink and the sink had a nice big crack in it he said hey father my brother come I make you a good price. Come on, come. I said, oh, well, I wouldn't, wouldn't really fit into my hand luggage. I just have to bring it back to Ireland. Oh, no, no, father. Father, come, come, come. I show you. Um, and every single day we had the same conversation. But he, he would stand outside all day. Hey, come, look, look at my sink. And try to sell the sink to everyone. Now, I think while it's tragic in a way that the guy has to actually try and make money selling a used sink, I think it's far more admirable than feeling sorry for yourself sitting at home and drinking vodka, like has happened in other countries when poverty hit. They just felt sorry for themselves, gave up and then drink themselves into oblivion. Uh, at least this, this, this guy, you know, he's trying to do something. These people would work, they, 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 they would, if it was just, if the place was just honest. Uh, and when it came to churches then, the churches had open sides. Like, I'm, I'm not sure if you remember what, um, what were they, were they 12 inch concrete blocks, cavity blocks? They were huge, I think they were 12 inch con con cavity blocks. We used, to, I used to have them, we used to have them around the farm. But the place was built with them, those cavity blocks on their sides. So you can, you can see out and the wind would blow through. So galvanized roof, these blocks on the sides, uh, very, very airy, obviously. Very, very loud. <laughs> this, everyone sings, the music is quite loud. But the point I'm, I'm making is that on the outside, you see poverty. Uh, on the outside, you see maybe potential. On the outside, you see maybe problems. But on the inside, there were good hearts. There were good people. Do you know, and just beaming smiles from ear to ear all day. And I, I loved that. It was just so impressive. You know, it was so impressive. I mean, like they don't, don't get me wrong, they don't, they don't live in abject poverty, but like life is simple in comparison to us. Um, but there was just such great joy. I say that because I, I was thinking of, of, of today's gospel 
Alas for you scribes and Pharisees, you're like whitewashed tombs that look handsome on the outside, but inside are full of dead men's bones and every kind of corruption. I mean, Jesus is really spelling, like he's not pulling any punches here at all. He's really laying it out. You guys are full of death and rotting corpses, but you look fine on the outside. And I was thinking, when I was there in Africa, I was kind of the opposite. It was like, on the outside, it looks like simple, simple, to say the least. But inside, it's full of life, and full of joy, and full of potential, and full of hope, and full of love, and full of faith. So, like, beauty is only skin deep, and appearances are deceiving. So, I just, as I was reading this again, something else struck me. That you're like whitewashed tombs that look handsome on the outside for the dead men's bones and every kind of corruption on the inside. After, after the council, I think something strange kind of happened. We looked at the church and we said, ah, look at all of this. It looks a bit pompous. It looks too triumphant. You know, those marble and all these kind of, you know, brass and, and nice things. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of them and that will kind of simplify the church and, you know, we'll show that we're kind of more humble. And for me, in a way, that's kind of like looking at this line of scripture saying alas you scribes and Pharisees you hypocrites you're like whitewashed tombs ah do you know what we'll do to fix it we'll take off the whitewash <laughs> no 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 that's not what the Lord is saying the, the problem isn't the whitewash that's not the problem that's the fact the only, the only good thing <laughs> right? at least it looks clean right uh, the problem wasn't the whitewash the problem is the heart of men that's the problem so the problem wasn't marble the problem wasn't brass. The problem wasn't altar rails. They weren't the problem. The problem was the heart of man. And that was what needed changing, the, the corruption of, of the heart of man. So any kind of pompous triumphalism that was there, that's, that's, that's human pride. That's not due to brass and marble. That's human pride. That's what needed to be changed. Not taking away the whitewash. Not taking away all, all the, 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 the uh, age old and, and dearly paid for artifacts and things that, that, that were in our, in our churches, they weren't the problem. The heart of man was. In the Ivory Coast, like, the, the problem there is, isn't so much poverty or wealth. The problem is, is the heart of man, the corruption of the few, the heart of man. That's, that's, that's what needs to be changed. The rest falls into place. The heart of man. That's what needs conversion. That's what needs light. That's what needs renewal. That's what needs purification. So the Lord is saying this, like the problem isn't that the scribes wore their tassels or phylacteries, whatever, that, those kind of things. I mean, one shouldn't be wearing any sort of clothes to show off. But I think someone like Fulton Sheen, right? A good and very, very prayerful and holy man, but yes, he indeed wore a cape because he was a superhero. Uh, but like, I mean, he, and he would have maybe come across as, you know, maybe a bit pompous, maybe. Because, I mean, he, was, he spoke with confidence. But the man, like, did a holy hour every single day after hearing the story of a, a, Jap a Chinese martyr, who I won't go into it, it takes take so long, but, uh, who, who received Holy Communion in a desecrated church on her knees every day until she was killed for doing so. And after hearing that story, he decided to do a holy hour every day himself. So, I mean, he was a man of God. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I get a lot from his writings. But on the outside, you might see a lot of maybe whitewash. But the whitewash isn't the problem. It's the heart of man. If the heart of man is good, then those things aren't a problem. It's not a problem if, 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 if a bishop dresses as a bishop or a priest dresses as a priest. You shouldn't be doing it to show off. But clothes aren't the problem. It's the heart. And this is what Jesus is trying to get at, you know, that that's, 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 what sa that's what saddened him. To see that all of this, all the focus was put on the externals. And they forgot about the things that, really important, that were really important. Compassion, love, sincerity, truth, courage, virtue. And we don't want to make that same mistake. And think that if we change the appearance of things, then everything will be okay. The way things change is when the, the heart of man changes, when we convert from inside. And that's why like, the, we, we need externals. We need things we, that, 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 that show us. You know, if, if an atheist walked into a church, he should know that we believe it's Jesus. Now, he might have his own opinion, 
but he should know by the way we build a church and light a church and all that decorated that we believe it's the Lord. We're doing him no favor by saying, mm, we don't want to be too kind of pompous or offensive or triumphant, so we'll put the Blessed Sacrament off to one side in a, in a small, simple little tabernacle, just so no one is kind of, so it doesn't intrude on anybody. That's not doing anybody any favors. In fact, if anything, anyone half sitting on the fence comes into the church, they look around and they go, is this a, I thought you said this was a Catholic church. <laughs> Where, where's, the, where's the Catholic stuff? Where's the tabernacle? Taking away those things doesn't help us. The Lord still needs to be at the center. Again, the, the, the whitewash, the decorations, and they're, they're not the problem. If we get the heart right, everything else falls into place. And this is what Jesus like, was able to see when he would see the people around him. He'd see their hearts. And so he saw like the, the widow giving her, her two cents, knowing that this was everything that she had. And he would see those giving large sums of money, making sure that everyone sees the 20 pound note going into the collection. Oh, is that a 20? Oh, well, it's a 20, I suppose. And making sure that, ev you know, making sure that everyone saw this was going in. I'm giving this freely of my generosity, you know. And the, the Lord could see the heart. You're, doing, you're not doing that for the glory of God. And, and this is what saddened him, you know. So, or even like people who, who, were, who were wrong, people who were living sinful lives. You know, the, 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 the thief on the cross beside him, the good thief. Had lived, uh, he was a thief, right? It, it doesn't say the, the innocent man accused of being a thief. He was a thief. So he had stolen from maybe poor people, maybe stolen some old lady's handbag on the way back from the post office after getting her pension. You know, I mean, he wasn't a good man. But the Lord saw his heart. I mean, he said, like, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He saw that this, this man is actually sincere about his apology. And that's sincere contrition. And he sees the heart. And the externals, the externals were horrific. The man was being crucified. But internally, his heart was actually cracking open wide for God's grace. So the Lord doesn't, doesn't see the externals. They, they're important for us. They are important for us because we need to show ourselves and show each other that, that the Lord is at the center and that this is a, a sacred event this is a an encounter between god and man so or god and mankind so this 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 should this place should be beautiful but it doesn't stop there it, it, and it can't stop there otherwise we've missed the point our hearts have to be more beautiful than the sanctuary of a church our hearts have to be more beautiful than saint peter's than the pieta than the higher altar in any of your cathedrals at home. Our heart, that's what's important. So even if we're celebrating Mass in a, a simple barren church in the Ivory Coast or some beautifully renovated basilica somewhere or on your own in a private room, what the Lord sees is, is our internal life, our openness to grace, our desire for him, and most especially our love. We heard in our, our psalm, O oh Lord, you search me and you know me. There's no deceiving him. So let us honestly, honestly open our hearts to the Lord to receive what he offers us today, to receive his grace, his blessing, and his love. Amen. Uh -huh.